You are listening to We Saw the Devil, an investigative and conversational true crime podcast that deep dives into fascinating criminal cases that are solved, unsolved, or ongoing. From America's Lori Vallow to Jeremy's Armin Mivas, we examine and discuss the world's most shocking cases. If you're enjoying the show, don't forget to follow us online. Check us out at we saw the devil.com and we saw the devil on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And don't forget, you can become part of the show by backing us on Patreon. Yeah, and then let's talk about April Raymond. Oh, I love this one. I, I love, love this her. One I love April Raymond. She clapped back at Archibald too, and I loved it. So she goes on to talk about how she met uh, Lori at church in Hawaii and they became close friends. Lori was so sweet and welcoming and nice. And then eventually they would vacation together. Charles would come, everybody would come. And then Lori told her that she was divorcing Charles because he was a demon named Ned Schneider and that he had JJ. That's why she didn't bring JJ on that trip to Hawaii. Uh, It was just her entirely because she was quote done with JJ. (laughs) That's sad. All right. So, Rob and I come to you and tell you I am uh, divorcing my wife because she is now um, goobity goob and uh, and I, you know I just hate everybody that's tied to her and I'm done. How the fuck can you react? To that? <laughs> right, I'd be like, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and honestly, <laughs> and honestly though, by saying like. And let's just say that you guys had a special needs child together, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, that needed around the clock care almost. And you're that was like, say, like her, you know, son from her side of the family. Um, and you were like, yep, I'm getting a divorce. Uh, that's why I don't have our son with us. Um, I'm done with him. Yeah. I honestly probably wouldn't give that statement. You think about it twice. But I think that you're cold and calloused absolutely may reevaluate our friendship. Mm-hmm. But my mind wouldn't go to you murdered him exactly right it is so right it, it, it instead your mind would be like okay what happened to your thinking yeah what happened to your thinking what happened to your mental health do i need to get you in somewhere um i would re- definitely reevaluate our friendship and yeah. that would be it i wouldn't yeah. say oh my god contemplating murder or anything like that and then i bring a new bff with you that is going yep yep that's right he's he's got this guy named ned schneider in him <laughs> Oh my god, Melody Gibb was like that. She's the worst salesperson. Okay, so like my age back went out last week, y'all, and I had to call around. They're so fucking expensive to get it fixed. Oh my god, uh, yes, my air conditioner went out, and so you know I called a couple of the larger companies here. They come over before they even enter my house or into my backyard. They've already gotten on the phone and called their sales department to dispatch another representative to try to sell me on a unit. Right? Mm-hmm. They're actual salespeople. I feel like Melanie Gibb is not a good salesperson. Like, can you no. imagine her showing up, you know, being April Raymond and Melanie Gibb coming up and being like, yeah, I'm here to gather the 144,000. Like I just, Melanie Gibb is just not somebody that anybody would rally behind. And that's why Lori brought her. Y- yeah. I, I back up. I don't know. It's like, well, here's one. And you can be one too. And you get to be one of the 144,000. And you get to be a one of the 144,000. <laughs> it's like Oprah giving away free cars, right? Exactly. But you, get to you be don't get one because you're dark. <laughs> it's. <sighs> how, how did just April Raymond not lose her mind? I just have to know. You know, imagine Melanie Gibbs showing up. And because she was sent there, you know, she and Lori went there to gather, gather April Raymond. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, you'll have to give up your kids. But hey small price to pay for being with us and the among the exalted boom right here you'll have to give up your kids and who is the one that's saying go get her chad daybell bam there again the state is being very subtle putting this narrative in there which i i think is it's just phenomenal the way the prosecution is doing this completely they're setting it up I, i i do i do agree i think that I have no idea what's going on behind closed doors, but I don't think they have the brass tacks nails to get Lori on murder. 
I, don't I think, think so that either. the best they're hoping for is to try to prove conspiracy. I think that they Lori moved to Rexburg. She and Chad were in constant physical contact. I bet they did their best to keep their skirts clean, you know, as far mm-hmm. as physical evidence on that and communications. I, I too, I'm too, I don't know. I feel like they're setting up Chad uh, for a reason too. Yep. I think that, I think the bulk of the evidence they have on him, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, Lori's and, got and, alibis 10 miles long. Yes, yeah, she does. During this trip, what happened to Tammy? Bye bye. Yep. It's so. uh yeah. <laughs> oh my god. No, but you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And to your point too, April had no problem snapping back. Uh-uh. And uh-uh. she asked Archibald asked Archibald asked Raymond if she noticed a change in Lori's belief system from when she met her and then after she came back in 2019 and Raymond April really actually said that her entire belief system changed because of the group that she had recently become a part of I mean period April Raymond stated it yeah that subtle grooming thing that she said right Mm -hmm. yes that they groomed her Mm, I mean mm, I mm. I honestly envision this as April Raymond being at the table and Melanie and Lori are trying to give her their best spiel Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. probably lots of the same thing that chad did right you're special you're wonderful you're you have you know this power and you need to come back that's grooming that is grooming what chad did to zulema that is grooming mm-hmm. you can also be groomed as an adult that's not only specific for children oh hell yeah you can be groomed as an adult and april said you know it was yeah you know, she could feel that their ultimate goal was to take her back and include her mm-hmm. in their in their fuckery <laughs> <laughs> you know, in, in for some reason, um, after you what you said about the the Branch Davidians, I'm I'm really starting to wonder if Chad didn't want a harem. It was going to be kind of like a group, you know, Chad and the and the and the Five Elements or something. I don't know. I have yet to see an apocalyptic cult other other than shit uh, alien the, uh, people. I did a whole last series on the. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, the the we're coming up to the mothership. Yes. <laughs> Heaven's Gate. Heaven's Gate. Thank you. Shit. Um, other than Heaven's Gate, Heaven's Gate actually for explicitly for mm-hmm. forbade it. No sex. No sex. No, you know, anything. A lot of the men would castrate themselves, or a handful of the men, excuse me, castrated themselves. Um 99% of cults have are like yeah. basically sex cults, right? It's almost always a male leader and they have a harem of women, um, you know, women and mm. children as it were, which is so gross and awful. But yeah, it's uh I have no doubt that Chad, you know, is the more women as more women got involved that that's yeah. what he was aiming for. I must agree with you completely on that one. And then then we get the news later that afternoon on Wednesday that the uh, person who got kicked <laughs> out of the court on tuesday met with judge boyce and they are now claiming that judge boyce has a bias a personal bias against them god Uh, i can't think of a more asinine thing but i'm sure there are plenty of people on her side oh i see it all over twitter and i see it all over facebook yeah i'm gonna stay nice it's just (laughs) do i think that they were taking pictures i have no idea i can't imagine that they would to be honest probably was some sort of innocent mistake or or misread of the situation very well could have been but the tweets and what's coming out of it after of there was no doubt in my mind that it's personal i highly doubt judge stephen boyce presiding over one of the most famous current Mm -hmm. trials of the last several years is going to do anything he doesn't have time for you (laughs) i'm like come on (laughs) Yeah, seriously, not one gov, not 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 one fuck given about you. Yeah, why would you say that publicly? Well, he just has it out for me. I don't, you know, he's suspect and he's involved in the LDS. So I highly doubt the fact that a lot of people are like the LDS Church is just pulling the strings on this entire trial. No, it is not. No, it is not. I wouldn't call myself a militant atheist, but I am definitely mm-hmm. an atheist, right? I do not think that the the LDS church has sway over this trial. I think that we have actually had a very good and fair trial so far. Yes, and and both sides are making extremely good points. Uh, Archibald is doing a fabulous job of trying to show that the state doesn't have shit on Lori. And um, it's not like he's not trying or, you know, well, why didn't he do? The dude is doing his job. And nobody can fault him. I do feel like Archibald could do a little bit more, though. 
in his questioning. Oh, but what he did to David Warwick, though. Oh, you know what, girl? Let's just go ahead and move on to uh, David Warwick. Let's just move Thursday. Now we're on Thursday for the order of witnesses. Chandler Police Sergeant uh, Moffitt, Lindsay Blake questioned him. You had Sidney Shank, who was the babysitter, remember, that Lori mm-hmm. hired when they were in Rexburg. She watched JJ like 1.5 times. Rob Wood questioned her. Archibald did cross-examine her. Mm-hmm. She felt that it was weird. I mean, that that is bizarre. I can't. Can you fathom being her now? I know. I haven't thought about her in probably two years. Then we had Josh Wilson, the principal of Kennedy Elementary, talked about you know when uh, Lori withdrew JJ from the school. Had Win Hill, uh, the dean of students at BYU, <clears throat> Idaho, and then finally David Warwick. Iris, take it away. (laughs) All right. So, Mr. David Warwick, here we go. Uh, First of all, the one thing that really got to me was how much he has aged in these last three years. Yeah, that was, I was still in Portland at that time, and that was like two and a half years ago. Okay. In two and a half years, this man has, at least his voice has aged significantly. When I heard him, I thought I was listening to a guy who was 70, 75 years old. Just the way his brain was working and everything. Now, the contention now, first of all, let's let's go ahead and talk about um, <laughs> Archibald trying to basically say, no, this guy has to go away because he listened to some of Melanie's testimony. And then him trying to explain, no, I mean... We had had a little row and uh, I was trying to see how she was. I was listening to her voice. I wasn't listening to what she was saying. Some people might call bullshit on that, but I'll tell you what. Sometimes when I am out and about, like if I have to travel, I will call my wife to see how she's doing. Then I listen to her voice and sometimes I have to go, oh, I'm sorry, what did you say? Because I'm listening to her voice to see how she is feeling. Because she deals with anxiety and and stuff like that. So I can see how David Warwick was doing the same. Because apparently uh, Melanie was pissed off that he didn't come up with her. Or or something weird. But um, everything got settled. And uh, the judge goes, no, we can hear it. Just don't do it again. Now a lot of people are going to go, oh my god, I cannot believe that Judge Boyce, blah, 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 blah. Enough with the monkeys in his circus. He barely can control what he has now. You know, and not that he's not doing a good job, but, you know, that's just, you know, too much. Okay, so the questioning begins on uh, the prosecution side. The prosecution did a good job of, you know, getting details and stuff from him, asking him questions. When did you, you meet Lori? How did you meet her? And again, he was just tripping over himself and, you know, like, oh, I'm sorry, I talked too much or did not, did I not say enough? Just kind of like his brain was just a little scrambled. And again, anxiety, maybe? being in front of a whole bunch of people <laughs> i think if you rewatch to his preliminary hearing like a year and a half ago or like two and a half years ago whenever um sorry i don't have that date exact date in front of me he was very much like almost there too he does not have a uh a good grasp he's very slow cognitively like in terms he of is. thought to word right and what i really liked about what the state was trying to do was not focus on uh the religious aspect of this all but focus on well, what did you see Lori do? Did you see Chad do this? Did Alex do this? Asking him very pointed questions. Mm-hmm. And he, he did give good answers, you know, um, about the scratches on Chad's neck. And he was like, it's barely a scratch. And it was interesting to note that um, David Warwick had a boy with down syndrome which is very close Mm -hmm. to when he said autistic Mm -hmm. that he is caring for so he wanted to engage with jj but jj was like nah dude don't have time for you later he thought it was very strange um of course we don't know the mental state of that child because one um the constant father figure charles Vallow, gone hadn't talked to his grandma and grandpa his service dog was ripped away from him. Exactly. He is no longer on his meds. Mm-hmm. He no longer has that social interaction with other children that he had at school. So, yeah, yeah of course that kid doesn't want to engage with an adult because adults are not trustworthy because all they're doing is leaving or taking away things that he needs. 
And that's actually one of the most heartbreaking pieces of this, too, is that both children probably I, I have no doubt in my mind that Tylee knew that something was happening. You know what I mean? That well, she yeah, she says, I'm not a zombie, mom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know that Tylee saw Charles Vallow drop dead. He was a zombie. Mm hmm. Tylee probably knew that something was up, but JJ, just how hard the last few weeks, if not a month of his life had been. Yeah. And you know what? Um, um, You and I had talked about this a little bit. And and to me, I think JJ is the saddest because this poor kid, to me, and this is my opinion only, to me, this child was being passed around like that unwanted knickknack heirloom. Mm Mm-hmm you know, from family to family, family, you don't want to throw it away because, you know, it's an heirloom, but yet you really don't want it. And that's how I feel this poor kid was being passed around between grandparents and Lori to Charles and back to Lori. And then who knows what it's, it's very, very sad because this kid came into the world to end up like this it's a heart wrenching and the woodcocks Kay and larry would have taken him in a heartbeat Mm -hmm. and provided a stable at least from what we know stable and at least very loving home yeah but yeah yeah. it's it's kind of fucked up but so of course then the cross-examination comes in i think it was archibald starts uh cross-examining him and all he's doing is what is you know to prepare the people and you believe this and you believe that Totally getting into the beliefs of how David Warwick thought. Because David Warwick was saying, well, everything that Chad was trying to sell me just didn't sit right with me because it doesn't follow the scriptures. It doesn't follow the Book of Mormon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? And uh, even to the point where Charles wanted him to look at, you know, at some real estate. And David Warwick's like, dude, I don't do business. Oh, you mean Chad? Um, yeah, Chad. I'm sorry. And, and David was like, dude, I do not do business on the Sabbath. Yeah, Chad took him to one of the places where he wanted to buy the land. Oh, yeah, because apparently that's where everybody was going to gather. <laughs> Let's put white tents out here. David Warwick was very, very adamant on, yeah, dude, this just doesn't sound right. And then um, he started hammering him about, well, you had dreams and visions so you had a vision while you were there and david war was like no it was a nightmare he goes well what's the difference just getting into this esoteric and mysticism of the whole religious aspect of david warwick's stance and i think what he was trying to show is these people are fucking woo woo okay they they believe in their visions and their dreams and they're getting blessings and you know people are shooting fire out of their hands it's just mass chaos whoever shoots fire out of their hands rolled a six (laughs) (laughs) but i and i think he was doing a really really good job of trying to show that it was religion that it held a lot of sway over this Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. that it had a and, and just the things that he was questioning i'm like you know okay what about the podcast he goes do you do podcasts all the time do you get paid he goes no they're interviews and, well what do you talk about and it's just you know how to sanctify yourself and how to do the fasting and he goes okay so then why are you doing stuff for prepare the people well it's because we're latter-day saints and you know we are preparing ourselves and then archibald asked him why do you not then believe that you're one of the 144,000? and this was powerful right here because the prophet, which I think currently is Newsom or, or Nelson, Russell Nelson, I think he is, he is the only one who can tell you you're one of the 144,000 and you're going to be hanging around on the last days and you're going to be missionaries and save the world, basically. Those are the only people that can do that. And, and it is true. Uh, it's called, you know, the gathering of Israel is basically what it's called. And they believe that as the apocalypse comes closer, they have this duty to share their religious message to to the world. And that's why there's a lot of mission trips, because that's that's what they believe in. And I'm not picking on you guys, I swear, because, you know, the Christian faith, the evangelicals have a whole bunch of woo-woo stuff, too. But just, you know, you're just priming somebody with mm-hmm. these beliefs of, you know, you have these special powers. It's it's not a far stretch, you know. No, it's not. <laughs> so, and and if you already believe in the end times that they're coming and all this, yeah, this is going to sound like sense. 
if you do not have a solid foundation in the dogma and the canon, which David Warwick did. So that's why I think it was just a fascinating to to see kind of like this verbal back and forth, like a verbal ping pong game between um, David Warwick and Archibald of going back and forth of like, well, you said you believed in this. He goes, well, no, 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 no. What I said was this. And he goes, okay, well then let's take it a next further, a step further. Then why were you believe? Why did you want a blessing? He goes, because I had a really bad dream. I had a really bad feeling. Because, so it was just going back and forth. If you guys get a chance to listen to that, David Warwick would be the one that I would listen to because it was just fascinating testimony. And I think a lot of people are sleeping on David Warwick's testimony and like mm-hmm. the power behind it, you know, based on what I'm seeing online. A lot of people are just thinking it was boring and kind of pointless. And there's a oh, lot no. of power actually in what transpired. I've given, I personally have given Melanie Gibb so much shit. I'm sure she had an entirely different experience when she was in it, you know, initially. Just to be clear, even though I am not a, you know, spiritual person, Lori and Chad's beliefs are not mainstream LDS beliefs. No, they're not. And that's why both were removed from the church, because that is so outside of what the LDS church believes. I have no doubt in my mind, if you look at the timing of everything, right after that visit, right, where JJ was last seen... Uh, Melanie Gibbs saw Alex Cox carrying him. Uh, they were doing the podcast. Warwick was there. That's pretty close to when Melanie Gibb was kind of like peace. Well, yeah. And I think David Warwick had a exactly. lot to do with that. Probably went like, look, dude, if we're going to get married, mm-hmm. we need to be compatible. And this is not. And, and do not get me wrong. David Warwick is involved in some of those groups as well. Right. He is. Mm-hmm. He's not completely outside. He's not this some chaste religious scholar. Like you said, he saw it and was like, no, Melanie, that's got to go. Yeah, it's like, we're not evenly yoked. Exactly. Either way, glad she got out of it. And then turned, you know, witness for the prosecution. So, (laughs) yeah, that phone call between her and uh, Lori, remember when she calls her core whore? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And all of this, and they started battling in religious scriptures. At that point, I think David Warwick had gotten through. I think so, too. And and I think for her to be so me like boom 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 here here's the canon here's here's our beliefs where he went like wait what but you were supposed to be my second hand <laughs> mm. extremely interesting and sometimes i kind of wonder if chad had to do maybe a little bit more grooming uh to Lori because all of a sudden here's this person who was supposed to be one of the hundred forty four thousand. you know it would kind of cast a little bit of doubt like well did i pick wrong Am I not that infallible? Mm. And April Raymond refused to come. And she was supposedly part of it. I wish that we could have more information on the conversations that Chad and Lori had. Maybe eventually those texts will come in the next trial. Yeah, I think so too. Or maybe even in this one too. It has, excuse me, it has to in this one as well. But I think we're going to see a lot more on that side. And also it'll be interesting to see what texts get shown. Mm -hmm. Because depending on the text that gets shown, that is going to basically give John Pryor the game plan. Mm. Yep. It sure is. And that's why John Pryor is there almost every single day. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a smart move. You know, it's kind of like watching tapes from uh, the the football team that you're going to be playing against on Sunday. Exactly. There was no court on Friday. The prosecution had actually scheduled ahead of time and requested not to have trial on Friday. So no trial on Friday. Just a couple extra notes that I uh, wrote down after listening to the entire week of audio <laughs> is Lori Vallow's cousin, Megan Iden. Um, she did an interview with Justin Lum, and she said that the church actually sent letters to family members telling them not to participate in the trial. Are uh, we surprised? No. Didn't they do that also uh, at the very beginning? Sure enough, did said you need to come to the church and come to the church and talk about what's going on. Do not go to the police. Do not get involved. Do not reach out. Which I mean, it happened. Mm -hmm. And that Mm -hmm. she actually believed that the church planted the seed for Lori's brainwashing and belief system. And then Lori's cousin in that interview also said that Barry Cox, so Lori's dad, that he was the person who shaped Lori's beliefs the most. Everyone knows Barry for that bullshit IRS book, uh, you know, how to beat the IRS book that he wrote and has and published on Amazon. And he would preach that he and his family were better than 95% of the people in the world. Oh, good God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Especially Janice Cox, Lori's mother, has some sincerely fucked up body uh, image issues. Uh, um, yeah, she does. 
really but, bad. But, you know, when you have to compete with your two young girls. Which she's been seen around Boise. No one's really talked much about Lori's family, though. Who's there, um, if anybody. But someone did actually see Janice Cox in Boise this past week. Really? Well, personally, I'd be scared, too, because then I would have to face uh, Kay and Larry. Right. Kay and Larry were imploring, asking her, where is Lori? Where are the children? John Pryor. A lot of people say that John Pryor is a bad attorney. He does have a history of his lonely own legal issues. I mean, he is such yeah. a wonderful person that a young girl, a single mother who was homeless, almost homeless, came into his law office consultation and he literally apparently tried to, you know, assault her. They're yeah. in the conference room. May not be a great person. But I do think that he's actually doing his due diligence with Chad. I think that so mm -hmm. far that Pryor has done a wonderful job. I don't think that people are giving him enough credit. And I think that we're going to actually see that in uh, Chad's trial when it comes up. However, one of my favorite moments from the week, if I can even say that, is when John Pryor asked the sketch artist, who, by the way, whoever is drawing the sketch artist is awful. Oh, my God. Yeah. Zulema does not look like that, people. Okay. Lori doesn't look like that. Colby doesn't look like that. I mean, the sketch artist, Ray Charles, could have done a better job. <laughs> I am convinced. Anyway, so John Pryor went over to the sketch artist, like looked over their shoulder and said, hey, when you sketch me, can you make me 30 pounds lighter and younger? <laughs> Whoever the sketch artist is is probably like, don't worry, I got you, fam. And then he's going to end up looking like SpongeBob SquarePants. I don't know. But <laughs> it's, uh, I thought that was funny. Like John Pryor does seem to have a pretty decent sense of humor. He does. But that that tied up the week. Any other any other thoughts? Like additional notes or you know miscellaneous things that you found interesting? Final thoughts on all this. I am extremely excited and waiting with bated breath for the forensics to come out. I mean, again, not ghoulish, but you know, it's it's what I it's what I did, and and I'm really interested to see. I'm interested to see if Lori is going to want to be excused. And of course, it shows a lot of where maybe her mental state is mm -hmm. and that she's refusing to wanting to be there when the kids are being talked about because maybe, I don't know, who knows, maybe, maybe not being love bombed by uh, Chad, maybe she's kind of losing everything that he was, you know, influencing her in, and her brain is kind of like coming back. I don't know. I honestly feel opposite. I feel like, I feel like she's gone. I don't feel like she's come back yet. I don't think that she's exhibited normal behavior. Like, she's still not exhibiting normal behavior. I don't think that she's fully back yet. You don't think so? Or, or do you think maybe her, her behavior is more of like, oh, I can't believe I have to sit through this because God's law versus man's law. I'm, why am I here? It can take years for someone to deprogram from a cult or you know, a, rel a religious cult or a zealotry or things like that. I, I don't think she's back in reality. And then I think that even when she is back in reality, if we ever even see that, she's still a shitty person. So, oh, well, yes. Terms and conditions may apply on that empathy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I totally agree with you that, that you know, she's, she's a shitty person. And uh, just the trauma that she has put so many people in. Mm -hmm. It's been very divisive. It has. It has been incredibly divisive. I've lost friends over this case. Just yes, because divisive. they get... Yes. I've lost friends over this case. I think, you know, there there are key a few key cases that this has happened to, like Scott Peterson, Jody mm -hmm. Arias, uh, Michelle Card Carter, Conrad Roy, Casey Anthony especially. Oh, yes. You know, where people can't agree and then they just go ape on one another and they can no longer respect one another as human beings. And I'm seeing so much of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just ugly. not. It's ugly. It is extremely ugly. The justice we want versus what the law is going to give her are going to be two different things, people. Just remember that. And that's basically my spiel. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. I'm 100% in agreement with you. I cannot wait to have you back to discuss this. Thank you again for taking two hours out of your day. Oh, no. I, it didn't even feel like it. You know, I was like, oh, fuck, it's two hours. <laughs> Quantum leap. <laughs> right. <laughs> And Iris, you actually have a podcast yourself. You have a lot of stuff going on. So if people are interested in following you and learning more about you and your interests, where, what do you do? Where can they find okay. you? Okay. So um, right now, um, I, my friend Mike and I, are, we're doing a podcast and it's about true crime, cryptids, aliens, disasters, just whatever topic that we feel talking about. And it's called 
That's Sort of Weird, and you can find it on that's sort of weird.com. Uh, we just did a, a podcast on the Satanic Panic of the 1980s, and that was lots of fun. And just to give you an idea of the stuff we have, like uh, we have the Polly Kloss case and the, the lead masks of Brazil, the Hollywood Blacklist, Mothman, just stuff like that. And it's just very type of things. And the next one that's coming up uh, this Sunday is going to be Cocaine Bear. We're going to go through the what really happened, and then we're going to discuss the movie also. So we're going to have fun with that. And where did what state did Cocaine Bear happen in? <laughs> well, why the wonderful state of Tennessee? <laughs> yeah, represent, <laughs> represent. <laughs> So, yeah, so you can find that, like I said, on that sort of weird.com. Yeah, everyone should check it out. But that's it for today, guys. As always, thank you for listening. Iris and I are going to be you know, watching the trial and taking notes, and we will be back. I'm going to force you back out, Iris. Hey, I'm here for you. Until next crime.